Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Minster High School, where it's homecoming, and the Minster Wildcats welcome in the Versailles Tigers. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. Tonight's premier sponsor is the Minster Bank, sponsoring the youth in our communities. Gilly, let's take a look at this game. You look at the Versailles Tigers coming in. They started the season out 5-0, and then they ran into a buzzsaw on Marion Local, and they took one last week against Anna, but still a quality team. Yeah, it's a quality team, unfortunately, that puts them two games back with, what, three to play. Yeah, right, right. You know, if you're in Minster's situation, this is an important game for them because a W tonight leaves them one game back with two games remaining. But, yeah, it's going to be a very stiff contest that always has been and always will be. And uh, they're great rivals in a great conference, and we're going to see some high-quality football tonight. We take a look at the home team, the Minster Wildcats. Gilly, they are sensational. They're 6-1, and 4-1. and one. Their only trip up this year is Coldwater by three points. No no shame in that loss, but, boy, they, they can score points in a hurry. They can score points, and it all it all starts with who? Brogan Steffi. Brogan Steffi. <laughs> He's you fantastic. Know? Well, and the thing about Brogan is, is he just can't stay healthy. Yeah. This is really the first year he's been able to stay healthy. You know, God willing, he remains healthy for the rest of the year because, you know, he's the, the straw that stirs that drink. And, and, and no disrespect because they got Mr. Niemeyer last year. Unfortunately, right. he's not playing sure. tonight. Played quarterback. And what a heck of an effort he gave last year at quarterback. And But uh, everything runs through Steffi, through the air and on the ground, and he's got a good supporting cast. He's got a six foot seven tight end that's being recruited he's a Division One, yeah. by Division I uh, prospects in Cole Albers and a host of other athletes as well as for sale, so it's going to be interesting tonight. Yeah, you look at uh, Minster, five games this year of 40 points or more, and defensively, Gilly, they only give up 11 points a game. Pretty stingy, huh? <laughs> Especially in this league, right? Yeah, yeah. in this league. So Versailles will kick off the Minster. Minster wins the kick. It is homecoming tonight. Congratulations to Queen Cadence Bergman and King Will Kanapke. Will Kanapke leads this team in tackles, and he's crowned king tonight. He's, he's, it's, he's the living, king he's, of tackles. Yeah, he's living right, isn't he? Hey, <laughs> what's that? You rule? Isn't that Burger King? You rule? <laughs> That's right. Both teams in their orange and black. Versailles in their white jerseys, and Minster in their home black jerseys. So Halloween theme tonight here as Black and orange rules the night, and Minster takes the kick at the five-yard line. They'll bring it up to the 10, to the 15, and they'll be taken down right about the 14-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will start over. And they are led onto the field by, we've talked about him so much already, Brogan Steffi, the 5'11", 180-pound senior, is 90 for 137. Gilly, he's thrown for 12 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Get this stat, 99 rushing attempts, 838 yards and 14 touchdowns. It's, 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 it's the whole thing is, you try to get a quarterback uncomfortable out of the pocket. Not this kid. <laughs> well, this RPO that, I mean, he does. I mean, look at the numbers he's putting up. That's phenomenal. So Steffi will be in the gun. He's got Connor Schmeezing off to his left. He's got a receiver to the right to the receiver to the rep. Schmeezing comes in with 528 yards and nine touchdowns. He is an excellent back. Steffi's going to look down. He's going deep down the left side. He's got a man out there and a lot of, lot of, lot of contact, but no flag on the play. His intended target was number eight. Dylan Heitkamp. Dylan Heitkamp is the leading receiver on this team. Averages 20 yards a catch, 481 yards, and five touchdowns. Yeah, Quatron right there on the defense, number 12. Nice job right there by that young man, Quatron. So to make bring up second and 10 from the 14. Steffi is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to hand to Schmeezing. Schmeezing goes off the right side. He's got a nice big chunk of change there for about five yards. There you see Connor Schmeezing, the 5'7", 170-pound senior. He's an all-purpose back, Gilly. He's an all-purpose back, and he's really, really good with his hands coming out of the backfield and catching the football also. So Minster goes to a little bit of a hurry-up action as they race to the line, bring up third and three, so a seven-yard gain, third and three at the 21-yard line. Steffi's in the gun. 11.24 to go here in the first quarter. Steffi's going to throw. He's gonna, oh, he's going to throw to the left side. He's got his man out there. He's got Dylan Heitkamp. Heitkamp breaks away, and he's got it first down. Tonight's first down sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Big thank you to Busher Electric as they are our scoreboard sponsor tonight. Excuse me. Busher Electric is a full service electrical contractor serving the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electrical needs. 
Really good job right there by Steffi looking off, looking at his receivers, throwing it out here on the flat towards us, being brought down by Eli Kaiser. Not so, until the first down. Bring up first and 10 from the 38. Steffi will go into the gun. Schmeezing will be off his left side. He's got three receivers to the right. He's going to hand it to Schmeezing. He goes off the left side. He's at the 40. He cuts back to the 45, and he's almost to the 50 at midfield. And there is Connor Schmeezing with another least famous recipe first down. Gilly, you want to – look, we, we, we're going to talk about it. This new press box they got oh, is just awesome? outstanding. Wow. This facility is second, it's to, none, second I mean. to none. It is absolutely beautiful. We get treated so well over here at Minster. So, you know, good props to the Minster community. So here they go. it will bring up second one, a nine-yard gain by Schmeezing at the 47. Steffi's going to keep the ball himself. He looks out. He's under pressure. He throws across the middle, and he's got his man. And a connection to Dylan Heitkamp. There you see the strong arm of Brogan Steffi as he just stepped into that one for another Lee's Famous Recipe well, first down. Well, you know, what he did really well is he got his feet set and just ripped that thing. What a nice, you know, pitch and catch. Landon Kanapke. Just couldn't quite get there. Was able to make the solo tackle, but not enough until another first down for the Wildcats. Got to bring up first and 10 from the 39. Brogan Steffi's going to keep it himself. He gets around the corner and picks up about three yards. Brogan Steffi on the year nine, or excuse me, 838 yards. So he is an absolute threat when he gets out of the pocket, and Versailles knows that. Versailles comes in, Gilly. Defensively, they only give up 13.8 a game. You look at their scores, Gilly. They had two shutouts before the uh, the Marion local game, and they were just throttled in that one, 48 nothing. Well, and that's no embarrassment. No, right. No, I mean, absolutely Marion not. local's throttling everybody, absolutely. it appears, right now. I, I think you could make an argument it's the best Marion local team ever. Oh. Here's Schmeezing again. He'll take the ball from Sh from Steffi, and he gets a nice big chunk of change there as he's thrown down at about the 25-yard line for another least famous recipe first down. Connor Schmeezing right now is just getting what he wants, and that offensive line is really tearing up the Versailles defense. Well, I mean, they're just opening up the holes, and he's finding his way and weaving his way through there, and you know as well as I do, he's a north-south runner. He does not run east and west. Schmeezing takes the handoff from Steffi, and a, and a high handoff that, or excuse me, a high uh, snap there, kind of threw that play off. Gilly Schmeezing had to wait for Brogan Steffi to bring it back down, and not much of a gain there at all. Luke Kaiser on the stop. Nice play by that young man. To bring up second and twelve, two yard loss. It'll go to the twenty seven yard line, eight twenty six to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Minster High School on homecoming night, and oh, there you boy. <laughs> The Versailles defensive line jump there. Take your there. pick. That'll be a five-yard move ball forward. So Minster will take that. Beautiful night here at Minster, Gilly. Temperatures in the low 70s, not much of a breeze. Folks out here in their shorts. And, uh, boy, we've been blessed with great weather this year for high school football. Well, speak for yourself. I remember at Allen East it wasn't so nice. <laughs> That's right. We made it through. But last week was really – where were we at last week? Well, yeah, year. and it was really nice yeah. there. I think they got they him again. jumped again. Brogan Steffi with the hard count, and they jump again two offsides in a row. Yep, that's going to be one that's going to pull the hair out of your head if you're the defensive coordinator. Absolutely. That's 10 yards of free plays right there. Mincer comes in offensively averaging 25.4 points a game. They rush for 225 a game, and they pass for 195. Brogan Steffi accounts for about 90% of that. Offensively, they go 421 yards a contest, and defensively, they only give up 282 a game. So here's Steffi at second and two. He's going to throw across the middle, and he's got a man across the middle, and he gets to the goal line, and a nice That's pitch Cole and Richard. catch there by Cole Richards, the tight end, as he gets up to the goal line. Excuse me, Cole Richards, the wide receiver, the 5'11", 165-pound senior, and Minster is knocking on the door right at the goal line. Really a good basketball player. He's a really good look, good athlete. <laughs> they got a great football team this oh, year. Their they're gonna, basketball they're gonna, <laughs> team is going to be really good. <laughs> they're going to be really good. Steffi's going to hand to Schmeezing. Schmeezing goes through the middle, and he is taken down. And a great job there. That is the first time on this drive that the Versailles defensive line has won the battle in the trenches. Yeah, they did a really good job bottling that up, didn't they? Yes, they first did. Schmidt James Schmidtmeyer on the tackle for Versailles. So you look at Versailles, they give up 13.8 a game. They only allow 210 yards rushing, or excuse me, 210 
yards a game. Um, rushing, they only give up 145 yards a game, so a stout defense here for the Tigers. Well, it's going to come down to field position sure. tonight and execution. So here goes Brogan Steffi. He's got Schmeezing off to his left. He's got a single receiver to the left side. Steffi's going to take the snap. He's going to take it himself. He's going to go towards the goal line, and let's see. I don't think he got in, Gilly. He's right at the goal line, and he did not. The Versailles defense is holding stiff. That's going to bring up third and a long one, one and a half, maybe two yards to go. The scoreboard has two to go, but uh, he's inching towards the goal line. Yeah, I would say he's inside the one-yard line. And they changed it now. Now we're third and one. Here goes Steffi. He's got Schmeezing off to the left side. 6.20 to go. Still knotted at zero. Steffi's going to take the snap. He's going to go Schmeezing up the middle, and he gets in. Four. He just yes, bowled he his way through the end zone, didn't he? Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Call 800-776-3097. Burke Petroleum, our touchdown sponsor. So the Minster Wildcats take a 6-0 lead with 6.14 to go. And, Gilly, what a fantastic drive of passing and rushing. They combined everything there. Yeah, combination of, you know, passing and running the football. Nice little uh, mixture. Uh, play calls there by the staff and, you know, had Versailles on their heels and they punched it in. That'll bring take it, an yeah. early 6 nothing lead, possibly and 7. Beckham Steffi will come in for the point after try. So the snap is back, the kick is up, and it is good. So a 6-14 to go. The Minster Wildcat take a 7-0 lead. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Minster High School. It was 6.14 to go in the first quarter. The Minster Wildcats have taken a 7-0 lead over the Versailles Tigers. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, it's homecoming here at Minster. And, uh, boy, they took it down the field like they own homecoming, didn't well, they, Well, homecoming night, you want, to, <laughs> you, you want to take care of business on that first possession. That's exactly what they did. They did a great job. So they will kick off to the Tigers. A low squibbler kick down the middle of the field. It's picked up at the 20-yard line. They'll bring it to the 25, to the 30, and they'll get to the 33. Great field position to start out for the Versailles Tigers. The Tigers will come on the field there and led by number three, quarterback Ethan Wilker, 6'1", 175-pound junior. He's 51 of 108 for 664 yards, five touchdowns, and three interceptions. They've got a two-headed monster in the backfield with Landon Kanapke and Ross Francis, well over 600 yards between these two. I'm just curious, Kanapke. You know, I'm wondering how much relation is around here. You know, it's such sure. a popular name and yeah. to Marion local area. you got to believe they're – Sure tail relation. Wilker throws across the middle, and he's got his reception out there at the 40-yard line. Connection made by number 29 for Versailles. That is Ross Francis, the running back out of the backfield, and a nice connection there. And, boy, Ethan Wilker looked really good on that throw. He snapped it, didn't he? Yes, he did. And Francis plays outside linebacker, so, yeah, he's, he's that was a, a heck of a catch. He's a load. He's, he is, you can tell he knows where the weight room is. Well, both, both running backs. So here they go. They'll go power eye football. Wilker goes under center. Second and three. Wilker calls out the play. Almost got an encroachment. Yeah, he's got Landon Kanapke and Ross Francis right behind him. He's going to hand off. They'll go off the left side. This is Landon Kanapke, a gain of about two, maybe. He'll bring up a manageable third and about three. Gilly with 522 to go. The king on the stop, Will Kanapke. Yeah, they're going to call it a first down, Gilly. He got the yardage, and I didn't believe he got the yardage, but he did. He gets another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. King Kanapke? King Kanapke, I what like a, it. What, yeah, that's a football name, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Will Kanapke from Minster got the king. That's, yeah. That, well, that's who was on the stop, that's the king right. Kanapke. That's right, King Kanapke. We, we've already named him. Here goes the handoff. Oh, go ahead. Ross play. Francis, and Francis has taken down. The Minster defensive line just dominated in the trenches there. Is there going to take about a three-yard loss, Gilly? Eamon Homan, Smeezing, host of Wildcats on the stop. Wow, that's Boy, a big loss. They've got that Wildcat roar that they do at Penn State. They've got it down pat here at Minster. You can hear it in the background. If we, were at Minst, if we were at Penn State, it'd drive me nuts. But since yeah, <laughs> I'd have earplugs in. <laughs> 4.28 to go here in the first quarter. Minster leads 7-0 as this quarter is just flying by. 
This is Ethan Wilker. He's in the gun. He's got a tail back on the left side. He's got three receivers to the right. Wilkie looks. He's going to throw back. He's got Francis out there for the reception, and he's oh, nothing doing. to go, and there's a host of the black and orange. So Wilker threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. The Minster Wildcats sniffed it out, and my goodness, there was no place to go. Yeah, just blew the play up. So a great job by the Minster defensive front. Boy, I'm telling you. You look at their games this year, they gave in the points of 21, 14, 14, 21, 24, 7, and 14. Nothing above 21 points all year, Gilly. And that was the opener against Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, that's consistency. Absolutely. That's, that's what you want. You want to keep getting better as you get closer to week 10. Wilker throws a dart across the middle, and the connection is made at the 50-yard line. And you want to talk about a laser. He threw that a country mile. Pass complete to number 12, and that is, let's see here, Jace Watron, the six-foot sophomore, and they are about, Gilly, about two yards short, fourth and two. Ooh, that's a rough spot. Yeah, they're on the 48, Gilly, and it looks like they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it. So I like the early play call and the early aggression by head coach Ryan Jones and the Versailles Tigers. So Wilker's in the gun. He's got a man in motion. The snap is there. They're going to hand the ball off, and no, they, they did not, he did not get it. First man through the middle, and the Minster. He's in yeah. What a stop by the Minster Wildcats. Two linebackers just filled the holes and met the running back at below, or excuse me, behind the line of scrimmage, and he just had nowhere to go. Yeah, Gilly, the, the line to gain was the 48. They're still at the 49. That's where the ball started. I mean, he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> no. No, you're right. So here come the Minster Wildcats. They lead seven to nothing here in the first quarter. Big thank you to our premier sponsor tonight, the Minster Bank, sponsoring the youth in our community. Minster Bank is our premier sponsor. So here come the Wildcats up seven nothing with 2:56 to go. Brogan Steffi in the gun. He's going to look across the field. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got his man out there. Connection made. He'll go to the 40, and that's where he'll be taken down. So a nice pitch and catch to number 36, Isaac Larger, 12, 11, 5, excuse me, 12, <laughs> 5, 11, 190 pound senior. I don't think 12, 11 is on the board there, Bill Gay. <laughs> 12, 11, <laughs> that, Landon that, Kanapke on the stop right there. That's one for the cutting room floor. For the floor. Tigers. <laughs> I'll tell you, just how much is, is Steffi improved? I mean, he looked his receivers over. Well, and you look, Gilly, he's getting all kinds of time. That offensive line is really yep. good right now, and you, you take a look at that offensive line. Let's give some credit to Tyler Hess and Will Fremmel, Evan Pranger, Grady Hine, Ian Homan. I mean, they're just really, really well, dominating. Then you throw Albers in at the tight end spot. Absolutely. I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get a pass thrown to him. All right, we got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout on the field. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Busher Electric, a full-service electrical contractor serving the area and communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. Our first down sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert, it's homecoming at Minster High School. And the Wildcats take an early 7-0 lead in this MAC showdown. Minster comes in 6-1 overall, 4-1 in the MAC. For sales, 5-2 overall and 3-2 and in the MAC. We'll go second and one from the 43. Brogan, Brogan Steffi's in the gun. High snap. He's going to look across the field. He's going to throw it right in the middle. He's oh, got a man. Pretty. What a connection it is. And the connection is made to number 27, Tyler Bergman, the 5'7", 135-pound sophomore. And I'm telling you, Brogan Steffi has such a good release, Gilly. I don't know how he caught that ball. That ball was on his way over his head, and he just snapped it like a rebound. Yes, he did. Yeah, he's he's going to make somebody a nice quarterback at the college level. Well, he's making Minster a nice quarterback. <laughs> So here come the Wildcats, first and 10, another Lee's famous recipe, first down. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. Steffi's going to hand the ball off. He'll go off the left side. He finds a hole, and he's going to take it into the end zone. Another 
Another, can you say another, Burke Petroleum touchdown. Number 20, Dominic Meyer, the 5'11", 180-pound junior, takes it in from 24 yards out. The Wildcats lead 13-11. Wow, what a kick out block by number 67, Grady Hine, the 5'10", 200-pound junior, just opening that hole up for that running back to run through to pay dirt and find the end zone. So Minster will come on for the extra point. Beckham Steffi, the five foot four, a 115 pound freshman. The left footed kicker eyes it. Snap is back. The hold is good. The kick is up. And it is good. So with 132 to go, the Minster Wildcats lead the Versailles Tigers 14 to nothing. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Minster High School, where with 1.32 to go in the first quarter, the Minster Wildcats have taken a 14 to nothing lead. And Brogan Steffi, the do-it-everything quarterback, is doing everything right now. And he is throwing darts across the field. And they've taken a 14-0 lead. There's a squib kick down the middle. It'll be picked up at the 20-yard line. They'll bring it to the 25, to the 30, and they'll be taken down about the 32-yard line. And that's where the Versailles Tigers will start and try to get back in this one down 14 to nothing. Uh, just doing some research here. It it says, according to Joe Idle, it says Minster, even if their record is six and one, they've they have clinched a playoff spot along with Marion Local, same region, Division Seven, Region Twenty Eight. Well, the Versailles Tigers, they are in a bit of a jam right now, down fourteen to nothing. Minster, two possessions, two touchdowns, and they are just doing everything right. Versailles moved the ball to midfield, their last possession, but they got stopped on a fourth and two, and they'll try it again. Here comes Ethan Wilker. He's in the gun. He's going to take a low snap. He's going to hand the ball off, and they'll gain maybe, maybe a yard. That was Landon Kanapke. Yeah, I'm not so sure he didn't trip over his I, I think you're right, Gary. right there. Uh, you're right. I think uh, he was he trying to find a crease. You know, Versailles right now sitting in the sixth spot in Division 5, Region 20. Well, this is a scary good Minster team, Ooh. Billy. Just watching the first two possessions, they've got weapons everywhere. Yes, they do. That'll bring they can up. score quick. Yes, they can. That'll bring up second and nine from the 33. Wilker takes the snap. He throws across the middle and just, just off of the shoulder pads, uh, Reception, or excuse me, the pass was intended for number 16, Drake Arns, the 6'2", 165 junior. And he kind of threw that one a little too hard, Gilly. He really hammered that one. <laughs> you think? Yeah. That, that was, thing looked like it come out of a cannon. Yeah, that was on Arns real if quick. If he'd have hit him in the face mask, it may have stuck in there. <laughs> That'll bring up third and nine from the 33-yard line. Wilker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the left and two to the right. He's got a single back in Landon Kanapke off to his left shoulder. Clock continues to run with 45 seconds. Wilker looks across the field. He throws to the middle and over the outstretched arms. Well, there's those two of, linebackers yeah. again wreaking havoc. He was intended for Ross Francis, the 5'9", 185-pound senior. Ross Francis has 62 carries for 279 yards on the season and four touchdowns, uh, but they did not complete the third down there. So they'll bring up fourth and nine. Versailles will go back in punt formation, and Minster will send number... 10, Connor Schmeezing back. And Connor Schmeezing is a home run hitter. If he gets any daylight, look out. Oh, nearly. Oh, they might have got a they, piece I was going to say, I said nearly blocked, but I'm telling you, Gilly, they may have touched that one. So that will roll to the 38-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will take over. 30 seconds to go here, Gilly, in the first quarter. I, I Look, I, I'm not a coach, but I think this is a good place to go long. On, on, this right, right is off a the bat. big possession. Yeah. More so for Versailles. You know what? They've got their backs pinned against the wall. They've got to find a way to slow Minster down. If Minster can punch another touchdown in here in, the, let's say, the next five minutes, it's really going to change the complexion well, of the game. Yeah, with 30 seconds to go, wouldn't it be something if Minster scored a quick Ooh. touchdown here, go up 21 nothing at the end of one quarter, and, boy, wouldn't Versailles have to do something special mm -hmm. then. So watch what they do. Brogan Steffi is in the backfield. It's an empty backfield, Gilly. They're going five wide here, first and ten from the 39-yard line. Steffi looks across the field at his head coach, waiting for his instructions. 
He's going to take the snap. He looks. He's going to go up the right side. He's got a man. They'll make a connection at the 50. And another absolute laser for another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. And pass completed to Tyler Bergman. And they are right at the 49-yard line. Barnes on the stop along with Dirksen. And the clock continues to run. You just wonder if they're going to get a playoff here at the end of the first quarter as they try to. Clock is down to eight. And Steffi is waiting on the snap. And they are. Steffi's going to hand to Schmeezy. You know he's going to keep it himself. He goes across the middle. And he gets to about the 44-yard line. And that'll do it after one quarter of play. After one quarter of play from Minster High School, the Minster Wildcats lead the Purcell Tiger 14 and up. We'll be back with second quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Minster High School. After one quarter of play, the Minster Wildcats lead the Purcell Tigers 14 and up. And during the break, Gil and I were just talking about the efficiency of this Minster offense and how just weapons all over the field, Gilly. And Brogan Steffi just orchestrates this like a conductor. He throws to the left side. He's got his man out there, and he's going to be taken out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Connection made to number 14, Noah Schwederman, 6'4", junior. And my goodness, they are running it to perfection tonight, Gilly. I'm telling you, you want to talk about spinning it. There's no wobble on that ball he's Look, throwing. I, I, we've, we've watched a lot Those of quarterbacks this year. We've had Tavian St. Clair. We've had a lot of great ones. Th this kid takes a back seat from to nobody. From yeah. the motion oh, of the way he throws goodness. the ball fundamentally. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's, he's, he's there. He's definitely a top three-er. Going to bring up first and ten from the 32. They're going to hand off, and not much of a gain there. Maybe a gain there to, to about a yard, yard and a half to Schmeezing. So Connor Schmeezing taken down. Mankey on the stop for the Tigers. Nice play by that young man. They're saying no gain. And it looked maybe about a yard, half a yard, but they're saying no gain. So second and 10 from the 32-yard line. Minster continues to lead 14 to nothing. See, I'm waiting for how long they're going to wait to find Albers right down the seam. Yeah, you're right. The you know big tight end, absolutely. Yeah, right down the seam. And there goes Albers right down the middle. Hey, guess what? Yeah, and Brogan Steffi finds him, and he's got him. There goes Albers across the middle to the 15-yard line, and Gilly called it right off the bat. Both of us were watching him. He just kind of peels out and goes to the left side. Let the linebackers do their thing, and then he, he rotated right back in. My goodness, what an absolute weapon in Cole Albers, 6'7", 235-pound junior, junior killer. He's got another year. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's going to go and get bigger. Well, you remember the Wolf brothers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, both go to Tennessee. One ends up in Georgia after graduating. Got to bring up first and 10 from the 15. Brogan Steffi takes the snap. He's going to go schmeezing up the middle, and he'll be stopped. Maybe a gain of a couple. Excuse me, that's Dominic Meyer. I think Bergman got to stop there. So Dominic Meyer, the 5'11", 180-pound junior, carries the ball, picks up maybe a yard. Clock continues to run. We're under 10 minutes here. Homecoming 2024. Congratulations to Queen Cadence Bergman and King Will Kanapke. Will, Will can, could have wore his crown out there tonight the way he's thumping people. He may, uh, he may have that on underneath. You don't know. That's right. That'll bring up second and eight from the 13. Brogan Steffi in the gun, schmeezing off to his right. He's going to throw the ball. He's got a man across the middle. Oh, nice play by Barnes. Oh, my goodness. Barnes made an incredible Beautiful defensive play. Beautiful inside hand. That is exactly That's the technique. Football. Yep, that is fundamental football. Dre Barnes. You know, I was going to throw a play. stat at you. Yeah. I think Steffi, first play was an incomplete pass. I think he was on a roll. I don't think he had any other incomplete pass, did he? I don't, I don't believe so. I, I think so. he yeah. went on a roll. So, right there, that play by Barnes. That's big. Yeah, Barnes just stayed on the inside of the receiver, used his inside, inside hand. yeah, and did a great job yep. of knocking that ball down. So Steffi in the empty backfield, he's got a man in motion. He's got two to the left, two to the right. We'll go third and eight. Steffi under heavy pressure. He's going to throw the screen. They got a man out there. Schmeezing at the 15 to the 10. Oh, and nice play. Close to another first down. That's going to bring up fourth and about a yard, a yard and a half, Gilly. You got to believe they're going to go for it here. Boy, Ross Francis did a great job shedding that block right there. You know, pushing, sneezing out of bounds. If he doesn't get him, he's going to go to 
the end zone for a touchdown. So here we go, fourth, and they're saying five. So they'll go fourth and five from the 10 yard line. They lead 14 to nothing with 8.57 to go here in the first quarter. Steffi's got Schmeezing off to his right side. He's got three receivers to the right. Steffi takes the snap. He's looking. He's going to roll to his right. He's throwing to the end zone. And oh, it's picked off, picked off at the five-yard line. And he's going to take it to the house if he gets through the first runner. And Mr. Gets, Barnes? And he gets ran out of bound at midfield. And that was Drake, Drake Arns, Arns, the 16 junior. I was saying Barnes, it's Arns. That's the play they needed, Oh, Gilly. He, he stepped right in on that. If he beats the man down the sideline, he's got six. And I think yeah. that was smeezing, I think, to run him out of bounds. Versailles Tigers, if they ever needed a break, they caught one right there. Drake Arns steps right in front of the Brogan Steffi pass. They were trying to get the inside slant in the end zone, and he just stepped in front of it. Jumped the route, didn't he? He sure did. He knew. That's a little film study there, Gilly. Oh. <laughs> so here come the Tigers. Ethan Wilker, he's got his man Landon Kanapke off to his right side. He's got three receivers to the right, a single receiver to the left side. Wilker's going to take the snap. He's going to, oh, he's going to hold it himself. He goes up the middle, tries to juke the first guy, and he's going to be taken down. Amazing. His momentum got him back up. Yeah. His momentum got him to their line of scrimmage, and that's where they're going to place the ball. There's a lot of running for no yards there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you look up, all you see is black and then white numbers with orange stripes. Clock continues to run. Eight minutes and ten seconds here until halftime. A quick first half, Gilly. This one's flown by. But look, you're looking at two disciplined teams that do not commit penalties. Mm -mm. It was kind of odd that Versailles jumped two in a row down here and got, you know, ten yards in penalties. So that's all we've seen tonight. Wilker with the snap. He's going to look across the middle, and he's got a man. And he makes the connection, and that is number 81. Uh, that is Luke Kaiser, the 6'3 senior. And he takes it to the midfield stripe right at the 50-yard line, and that's going to make a manageable third down, Gilly. Bring up third and three from the 50. I think Charlie Winter was in on that stop, number 28. So Wilker will go into the gun. He's got Ross Francis off to his right side, and they got a man in motion. And he's trying to do the hard count to draw him off sides. And he's looking over at his coach. You just wonder if they're going to take the timeout. And that's what they're going to do. So a 7-12 to go here until halftime. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WLSN. Welcome back to Minster High School with 7-12 to go. The sales Tigers are down 14-0 to the Minster Wildcats. It's third and about three. Wilker will go under center. They'll go power eye football. They'll hand off the ball, and they'll get close to a first down. And I think the second effort, I think he got it. And what a, what a nice job by Landon Kanapke and Gilly. They may have to measure that one, but he's awful close. Yeah, he did a really good job using his legs and Okay, they're going to call it fourth and one. Bouncing off of defenders. They're going to call fourth and two. Fourth and, yeah, it looks closer than two yards to me, Gilly. <laughs> so they look across at Coach Ryan Jones, and he's keeping the offense Let's out there. Let's just put it this way. It is a long yard. It partner. is a long yard. Wilker's going to go under center. He's got Landon Kanapke and Ross Francis right behind him. Wilker calls the set. They got a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball off. Oh, and oh, it's somebody shot in the gap. backfield. What a play. Number 51. That is Gabe Bornhorst, the 5'11", 215-pound senior. He shot through there like a missile, Gilly. Well, he's in the top ten in sacks coming into tonight. He's at, he had four and a half sacks along with Will Fremmel at four. So. Gilly, that's twice that's a, now. That's a TFL yeah. right there. Absolutely. That's twice now that Versailles has fa fallen on fourth down attempts, and the Minster defensive front is really winning the battle in the trenches. Well, and here you go. You, you got a hot quarterback that just made a mistake, and let's see what he does to redeem himself. So here comes Minster. First and 10 from the 49. Brogan Steffi in an empty backfield. Steffi looks across. 
He steps up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. Oh, He's nice tripped play. up. And a really, really nice play there by number 81, Luke Kaiser. Luke, Kaiser. Luke Kaiser's all over the field tonight for the Versailles Tigers. Boy, if he didn't make that shoestring tackle, Gilly, he can get 10 or 12 yards there. Steffi does such a great job of recognizing when Vision. there's nothing there, and he steps up in the pocket, and he's all over the field. Yeah, he doesn't dance. I mean, no, he, he gets his not. feet set. So here go the Wildcats. They've got Dominic Meyer off of Steffi's left shoulder. They're gonna, and Steffi's gonna keep it himself. And jumps the pile, are you kidding me? He jumps the pile, and he takes it to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the five. Gilly, I've never seen that out of a quarterback. He jumped the pile, otherwise he stopped at the line of scrimmage. That's your athleticism. Are you kidding me? Brogan Steffi with the run of the night, he jumped the pile. That's it's another just, Lee's Famous Recipe first it's down. It's not for Jace Watron right there. That's a touchdown. Gilly, that's a human highlight film out there. Brogan Steffi is as good as they come in Northwest Ohio. Boy, you're right. He's been hurt the last couple of years. Can you imagine the numbers he'd have racked up? <laughs> and, and, again, I'm not taking anything away no. from Neymar. No, not at all. You know, but when you take and have to flip-flop and change positions... We just got a <laughs> – our cameraman, Jacob O'Neill, said, my jaw just dropped. Yeah. I said, yours and everybody in the stadium. So they hand off to Dominic Meyer. Not much there. Uh, the Versailles defense tightens up a little bit. That was a jaw dropper. I'm Star telling you. That, key on the stop. That's going to be a WSN highlight for oh, a no long question. time. <laughs> you got to be They still do me. the top five because I'll tell you what, that's right up in there. <laughs> no, I have not. That's like a Tim Tebow jump pass, Gilly. It's something you don't see very often. So here go the Wildcats, second and five from the five-yard line. Dominic Meyer off of Steffi's left shoulder. He's got a receiver clear out to the left in single coverage. You just wonder if they won't slant him into the end zone, Gilly, and Steffi throw one to him. Steffi takes the snap. He hands to Meyer. Meyer goes off the left side, goes towards the goal line. And oh, he took a pop. He did take a pop. He's going to be about a yard short. He jumps right back up there. And that will bring up, let's see, they're calling it. Be Eli Kaiser on the stop. Third and goal. Steffi's in the gun. Third and goal from the one. And they'll go Dominic Meyer. And he walks into the end zone for another Burke Petroleum touchdown. Dominic Meyer with the one-yard scamper. And the Wildcats lead 20 to nothing with 3.55 to go. A hey, question. Yes. Do you think that jump right there would go on, you got mossed, or does it have to be a pass? <laughs> it's got to be a pass. Shoot, because I tell you what, he jumped that defender, and that defender whiffed on that tackle. <laughs> so the young freshman, Steffi, comes out, the left-footed kicker comes out to tack on the extra point. He's two for two tonight, and we'll see if he can't make it three for three. Snap is back, hold is good, kick is up, and it is, and yes, it goes It goes across the bar. I didn't think it had enough leg, Gilly, and it goes across the bar. I'll tell you what, I'm surprised that place, that holder, yeah. still has any fingers left because that ball was <laughs> sideways, and he got it on. He got it upright, but, man, I'm telling you, I thought he lost his fingers in the process. So with 3.55 to go, the Minster Wildcats lead 21 to nothing. We're going to leave it right here. Hey, everybody, join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as we break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. It's the Three Wise Men podcast brought to you by WOSN. Gilly, we got to get you on the podcast, brother. We have an absolute blast doing I'd that. I'd love to do it. Had, love the, to. had the big defensive end, Parker Krim, on earlier this week. He was fantastic. Being recruited by tons of schools, Gilly. Took an official visit to Notre Dame a couple weeks Good ago. Good for him. Yeah, Congratulations absolutely. to him. You know what? Keep putting the numbers up, big fella. Keep studying in the classroom. Academics plays a huge part. And don't for one second think that coaches do not do not check with Absolutely. your guidance department on your academics. So the ball is kicked to the 20-yard line. They bring it to the 30, to the 35, and they'll be taken out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. That's where the Versailles Tigers will start over. You take a look at Versailles, Gilly. They start the season beating Milton Union 33 to nothing. They beat Fort Lormie 41 to nothing. They beat Delphi St. John 17 to seven. Then they get a close one beating New Bremen by a single point at 18 to 17. They beat Parkway 37 to 12. And the last two weeks, 
you know, they lose to Marion Local 48 nothing, and Anna is the one that kind of everybody's scratching their head about. Not that Anna's not a quality team. They are. But, you know, Versailles and Anna, both really good teams. Yeah, that's that's one of those that's a head scratcher. But then again, like you said, you got to have a lot of respect for Anna. They've, they've, oh, they, they've won a lot of games. And they got a tough one tonight against Marion Local, so we'll see how they do down there. Here goes Ethan Wilker in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to throw to the left side, and he's got his man out there. Connection made to number uh, 42 for the Tigers. That is James Schmidtmeyer, the 5'9", 196-pound senior, and Connor Schmeezing laid the wood. Did you hear the pops up here? I can hear it from well, up here. I'm not so impressed with this, so much with that. It's just with his ability to grapple and get his arms around him. I mean, he put him to the ground he did. in quick. That'll bring up second and five from the 41-yard line with 3.19 to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, if you're for sales now, you've got to get something in this possession, point-wise. Wilker in an empty backfield. He's got a man in motion. He drops the ball, picks it up. He's under heavy pressure, and he's in real trouble, Gilly. He comes back to the left side, and he is going to be taken down. Uh, makes the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Boy, that, that play was doomed from the start once he dropped the ball. Boy, Smeezing has got to be close to double digits already in tackles. He's all over the place. Yes, he is. He is fantastic. This Minster defense is really good. Gilly, I, 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 look, I don't know if anybody wants to play this Minster team in the postseason. They, they're they really good. Oh. <laughs> they have five games of 40 points or more. So here goes Wilker. They'll bring up third and seven from the 39. Wilker's got Ross Francis off to his right side. He looks across the middle and he throws it. He's got it over to Kanapke. Kanapke takes it and gets a first down. Nice job by Landon Kanapke. Little screen pass there. Landon Kanapke finds another Lee's famous recipe first down. So the Tigers are on the move with 2.14 to go until halftime. Will Kanapke on the stop along with Joey Dwinger? I think we can say Will Kanapke for every tackle, Gil. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Uh, him and Smeezing, those two linebackers. Bring up first and 10 from the 39-yard line. You got two second level guys can get it done, boys. It, a big plus for your team. Look Wilker who. is taken down, and that's about a seven, eight yard loss. He lost his footing there, and Connor Schmeezing cleans it up. And my goodness, that Minster defensive line is dominant right now. Clock continues to run with 1.32 to go. Here, here's your problem, Gilly. Unless you move the ball here Ooh. in the next couple of plays, you, you don't want to give Minster the ball back with any time down 21 to nothing. Bring up second and 20 from the 40. Wilker in the gun. He takes the snap. Looks across. He throws across the middle. He's got a man oh, nice and ball. a nice connection. And he nice finds ball. Landon Kanapke for a gain of about 23 yards. What a nice pass and a great catch to take it across the middle. Boy, exactly what they need. big first down oh, right there oh, for the Tigers. Brother, a big Lee's famous recipe yeah. first down. So here comes the Versailles Tigers in the hurry up offense. Clock goes down to 103. Wilker takes the snap. He's under pressure. He's rolling to his left, and he's got a man. He's got Landon Kanapke out there for a gain of about three yards, and the Versailles Tigers will take a timeout. So we'll keep it here with 56 seconds to go. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at op.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. Gilly, our beloved Buckeyes, go to the Pacific Northwest tomorrow to take on the dreaded Oregon Ducks. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to find out just how good Ohio State really is on both sides of the ball. No disrespect to the teams that they've already played, but... Uh, it's a different animal. Eugene is a yeah. different animal in yeah. a different city, and uh, you got to believe it's going to be one in the trenches on both sides of the ball. I completely agree with you, Gilly. I really like the way the Ohio State offensive line played last week against a really good Iowa defensive line. I love the Buckeyes defensive line, so I, th I think if we win the game in the trenches, we win the game. I agree. Yeah. I agree, and I don't think – People give Dylan Gabriel enough respect. No, no, he's a good quarterback. He's a very good quarterback that knows what's going on, and he's played the game long enough. He's not going to be scared or nervous, I can tell you that. So here come the Tigers, second and seven from the 37. Wilker looks across. He's under heavy pressure. There's a flag thrown in the backfield. He's got his man out there, and he 
the intended target was number 12, Jace Watron, and he just dropped the ball. He had it in his hands. Boy, he's really frustrated, but this looks like a holding play. Yeah, it's going to be a hold, I believe. Yeah. They got the right tackle. Nice deep ball there by Ethan Wilker, and he found Jace Watron with a nice pass, and he just dropped the ball in the end zone, and he was really upset with himself. Well, if you're going to drop one, now's the time sure, to do it. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So that'll back them up 10 yards with 48 seconds to go, make it second and 17. Beautiful night tonight. Temperatures in the low 70s, not much of a breeze blowing, and uh, just a beautiful night for high school football in late October. So that'll be second and seven from the 37. Wilker under heavy pressure. He's going to throw across the middle, and it's picked off. Oh, picked off at the 30. They They'll go to the 40, to the 50. See. He's up the middle of the sideline. And he is taken out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And that is exactly what they did not want to see. Gilly, there's 37 seconds left. And I'm promising you, Minster's not done. They're going to go after another score. Well, you've got to. You know, you, you do not want to put yourself in a situation where you let the opponent back into the game. That'll bring it first and 10 from the 39. And my goodness. That is a opportunistic defense by the Minster Wildcats. And look, that's twice now we've seen Versailles driving the ball on a nice possession, and they just turn it over. So just a lot of bad luck right now for the Versailles Tigers. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Minster High School, homecoming 2024. Congratulations to Queen Caden Bergman and King Will Kanapke. Oh, boy, empty backfield. Empty backfield. They're going to spread yeah. it around. They got five wide. Steffi's in the gun. He takes the snap. He looks across. He throws down the middle. He's got his man out there. Connection made, and he's just running over people. Are you kidding me, Gilly? He Is that ran a big over. big fella? I, I'm trying to get a number on the Dylan Heitkamp, they're saying, and he just ran over three people, Gilly. Heck of a, heck of a catch. For another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. My goodness, timeout on the field with 30 seconds to go. We'll take a timeout of the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster High School with 30 seconds to go. The Wildcats trying to put another score on the board as Brogan Steffi and the Wildcats moving the ball down after a turnover by the Versailles Tigers. It's first and 10 from the 17. Steffi in the gun. He looks across the field. He throws deep down the right side. He's got a man out there, and it is off the hands. Intended target was number one, Caleb Kaus. That's some laundry on the field, partner. Yeah, I think we, we got a hold. I think you're right, Gilly. On Versailles. Whether they called a hold or pass interference, that would be, be interesting. We'll see what the call is here. Tigers. Holding against for sales. 26 seconds to go here until halftime. And Minster trying to put another score on the board. Defensive holding is a 10 yard penalty. That's a 10 yard penalty for defensive holding. Steffi comes over and talking to his coach. Boy, <laughs> I, I don't know what you do to stop this offense, Gilly, because they, they can they can pretty much score from anywhere on the field. When Hold for have, a downpour. Yeah, when you have a dynamic quarterback like Brogan Steffi, you, you have a – You've you got to play a flawless game. You sure. can't turn the ball over, and you got to make sure you make open field tackles. There's Steffi, throws across the middle. He got Kaus nice on play. another. They tried to run a drag screen across the middle of the field, and Kaus is taken down. And Minster will take a timeout with 19 seconds to go. Nice play there by Eli Kaiser. The WSN Score app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old app. So make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. I'm telling you, Gilly, on Friday nights, I check the WSN app religiously. <laughs> every time we oh, go yeah. to break, That's every time we go yeah, yeah. yeah, they do a phenomenal job of keeping up on that. They really do. And in the wintertime, it's Friday and Saturday night because it's all year long for basketball. So we got a lot of scores coming in. 
surprise, surprise, Marion Local's rolling along. Guess who plays <laughs> next week? Cole Minster and Marion Local. What a matchup that's going to be. Down at Maria Stein. You what? imagine what the 50 50 is going to be? Yeah, we might have to send money down there for yes. that. Yes. <laughs> so here we go. Second and one from the nine yard line. Steffi's in the gun. He's got Schmeezing off to his right side. He takes the snap, looks across the middle. He's under pressure. He's going to keep it himself. No, he's going to throw it. He's got a man. Touchdown, another Burke Petroleum touchdown as he finds number 27, Tyler Bergman, for the nine-yard touchdown scribe, makes it 27 to nothing. Did you see him step up in the pocket? He stepped Billy? up in the pocket and drew the defender, gave him a little pump fake and frozen. That's, that's, that's just, just natural frozen. athletic ability. Well, that's being coached, you know. Absolutely. That's, so. that's where a kid that attends football camps and listens to his coaches on the sidelines and just keeps continuing to get better. And, and imagine how good if he'd be healthy yeah. throughout his career. Steffi, the freshman, on for the extra point. The kick is up. And it is good. He's four for four tonight with 14 seconds to go. The Minster Wildcats lead the Versailles Tigers 28 to nothing. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Minster High School with 14 seconds to go until halftime. The Minster Wildcats have taken a 28 to nothing lead over the Versailles Tigers. And Gilly, they're just doing whatever they want to do, and they're doing it through the air. They're doing it on the ground. They're doing it in special teams. They're getting turnovers. It's just a complete team effort tonight. We're seeing total domination by the well, Wildcats. You know, and I think, like you said, a lot of it goes to the defense and their ability to put Versailles in behind the chains and force them to throw the ball. We saw what happened with the interception and the long return. And as a result, they got seven more points and now lead 28 to nothing here with eight ticks left here in the second quarter. So what a game that'll be next week down in Maria Stein, Gilly. <laughs> what a game that's, that's going to be. be the game of the week? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we talk about that mince or that uh, cold water uh, Marion local matchup, but my goodness, that matchup with Minster next week, that's going to be a dandy. <laughs> well, imagine that. Marion local is going to go back to back. They're going to go Minster and then Coldwater. Oh, yeah. Well, I think they're up for the challenge. I don't think you? so, too. <laughs> Let's see what. Uh, a lot of people thought Anna was going to hang around tonight, sure. too. And, yeah, and right. the last report was 35 to nothing right. in the second quarter. Wilker throws a screen pass. He's got his man out there, and he is immediately Flight. taken down. And that will end the first half of play. After one half of play, the Minster Wildcats lead the Versailles Tigers 28 to nothing. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. It's halftime here at Minster High School where Homecoming 2024 is taking place and the Minster Wildcats lead the Versailles Tigers 28 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, and Gilly, we take a look at the first half stats and it was dominated by Minster. They ran for 110 yards, they passed for 147 yards. Time of possession is the huge indicator, Gilly. The Minster Wildcats, 16 minutes and 20 seconds. Versailles, 740. And listen to these stats for Minster's quarterback, Brogan Steffi. You don't get much better than this. 12 of 15 for 147 yards. He was sensational. And we already talked about the jump he made over the defensive and line. Doggone him, he threw an interception, too. <laughs> well, I didn't what, want to mention What's it. the total, total yards? It's just out of curiosity. Uh, total yards, Minster has 257. Versailles, 54. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So a big time advantage for the Minster Wildcats. Versailles led by Ethan Wilker, the quarterback, was 9 of 12 for 65 yards. When he had time, Gilly, he was efficient. They moved the ball down the field. They got stopped on two separate fourth down attempts and a big time interception. Uh, you know, you saw some flashes of something they wanted to happen, but Minster's defense has just, just been dominant. Down. Just they dominant. buckled down and they bent, they didn't break, and... But oh boy, they're just, you know, you hold a team like Versailles to 54 yards. 
It's, it's, yeah, it's just been really, really impressive. And I said earlier, it is homecoming tonight here. Congratulations to Queen Cadence Bergman, as she is the 2024 homecoming queen. Got to watch the ceremonies before the game. They do it first rate down here, don't they, Gilly? They do do it first rate. You know, one thing about Minster, you know, they could really easily overlook for sales to get ready for next week, and that's sure. not been the case. So no. kudos to uh, Coach Whiting and his staff for keeping his – black and orange focused against the Tigers tonight. Today's premier community sponsor for Minster is the Minster Bank, sponsoring the youth in our community. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Busher Electric, a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electrical needs. And our first down sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So the Mr. Wildcats will kick off to the Versailles Tigers to start the second half, and we are underway. A squib kick right at midfield, and it hit the up man right in the chest. And it Good was played by that young man for number 61, Jeremy. Jake Borchers, the six foot two junior. Boy, it came on him real quick, and a good job by him handling that ball, Gilly. Yeah, he didn't try to pick it up. He he laid down on the ground, protected it. Nice job by that young man. Big thank you to our touchdown sponsor tonight, Burke Petroleum. They are now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. 1-800-776-3097. So here comes Ethan Willicker. He'll go under center. He's got his two backs, Landon Kanapke and Ross Francis, in the backfield with him. They're in the eye. Don't see a lot of power eye football anymore, do you, Gilly? No. Nope. No, we don't. So Wilker, he's going to take it himself, go right up the middle, a gain of there. about five yards. And uh, obviously something they wanted to they start. Yeah, they saw something in the, the first play of the second half is a five-yard gain by Wilker. And uh, nice job by that young man. Dwanger and Bornhorst on the stop there for the Minster Wildcats, but not until he got four yards on that little quarterback keeper. So both of the quarterbacks have an interception tonight. Uh Brogan Steffi tried to throw into the end zone, was picked off in the end zone. A nice return by the Versailles Tigers to midfield. So Wilker goes under center again. He's got Francis and Kanapke behind him. He's going to hand off, and nothing going on. And a big time tackle there Bornhorst. by Gabe Bornhorst. <laughs> Bornhorst is everywhere. Well, he's got four and a half sacks, like we mentioned earlier on the year, which ranks third in the conference behind Noah Will Devanna. And after after har, wouldn't spell that one. And number one, <laughs> try that one, brother. And number two, pronunciate it. So hopefully I didn't butcher it too bad. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Minster High School. 10:45 to go here in the third quarter. Minster leads 28 to nothing over the Grisales Tigers. We'll go third and five from the 46. Wilker's in the gun. He's going to throw the ball across the middle. And he's got a man. He's got a man right across the middle, and he's picked up big time yardage. And a gain to the 20-yard line and a nice well, pitching catch, catch there. Drake Arns. Drake Arns with a nice catch and a run. And the Versailles Tigers are right back in it on the 20-yard line. We're talking red zone football the first time tonight for the Tigers. Nice pitch and catch right there. That'll bring up another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Clock is at 10-13 in the third quarter. Wilker's in the gun. He's got an empty backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand off to the man across the left. This is Francis, and Francis taking down a gain of about a yard and a half, maybe two yards. Ross Francis on the season has 279 yards and four touchdowns. He and Landon Kanapke combined to make a really nice duo. Kanapke with 348 yards and six touchdowns. So you got to believe that if Versailles gets a score here, Gilly, and maybe a quick stop, they're, they're right back in this they thing. They are right back into yeah, this absolutely. thing. You know, their goal here should be to try to cut it in half, enter in that fourth quarter. So we'll go second and seven from the 17. Wilker takes the snap and the gun. He'll hand it to Francis up the middle and nothing doing in that defensive line. Boy, they're not having any success between the tackles, Gilly. Everything they get, they bounce on the outside. That interior line for the Minster Wildcats is as good as I've seen all year. Born horse on the stop along with Connor Schmeezing. Yeah, I agree with you. They they plug it up, and, and a lot of that has to do with their two second-level players, and that being the linebackers of Kanapke and Schmeezing. Yeah, they yeah. do a great job. They just cover so much ground. 
So it'll go third and seven from the 17. Wilker in the gun. He's going to take the snap. He looks across the middle. He's under pressure. Tries to elude the rush, and he's going to be taken down and thrown down by number 50, Ian Homan. The 6'3", 215-pound sophomore said, it ain't happening on my watch. Well, I'll tell you what, he <laughs> was really, really careful not to get that horse right, collar. Right. Yeah, you're exactly he made right. sure that he had his hands in a position where the official couldn't call that. Nice play by that young man. Remember, fourth and seven, and they're going to try a field goal attempt. It's a 42-yard attempt here, and they're marking it for a 42-yard attempt. This is Leland Bolin. Snap is back, kick is up, and it is off the mark. It went right. It had enough distance, but he just misses. Yeah, just a little push there at the distance, like you said. My goodness, he came out there with a 42-yard field goal, and he got everything on that ball. It just went right, but a great attempt there by the Versailles Tigers, and the Minster Wildcats are going to take over in nice field position. They're already up 28-0. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 25-yard line. So they just announced that the all-time long here is 43 yards on the field. So here comes Brogan Steffi and the Wildcats. They'll go first and 10 from the 20. Steffi takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Schmeezing. Schmeezing goes off the left, or excuse me, off the right side, and he'll get about five yards to the 25-yard line. So Connor Schmeezing, nice job of picking up five yards there on a first and 10. Horns on the stop. That'll bring up second and five from the 25. Steffi in the gun. He's got Schmeezing off to his left side. Three receivers to the left. He's going to look across the field. They're going to throw back to the right side. This is Schmeezing. He's got blockers in front of him. Down the right side. He gets to the 40, to the 45. Cuts to the middle of the field, to the 50. He cuts back up to the left. He's at the 40. He's got one man to beat and taken down at the 35-yard line. Connor Schmeezing. <laughs> Look, I keep saying it, every time he touches the ball, something electric happens. Well, and I'll tell you, his teammates, they just walled up. And, you know, it all starts with the protection of the, the lineman blocking for him. And the wall was there as well as the receivers holding their sustained blocks too. So the Minster Wildcats knocking on the door again at the 35-yard line. Rogan Steffi will go to the gun. We're another least famous recipe first down, first and 10 from the 35. Boy, they put one in the... End zone here, Gilly. You're talking running clock in the middle of the third quarter. Steffi takes the ball. Looks across the middle, and it's batted down. Oh, my goodness, nice batted play. down at the line of scrimmage, and he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Appeared to be Lou Kaiser. Gilly, I'll tell you what. The Wildcats love to run that slant from the far sideline, and it's been effective all night. And Steffi gets the ball out so quick that it's hard to defend. Unless you're playing on inside protection, you can't right. get to that receiver. No. And I'm waiting for them to pick their spot again for <laughs> right. the big fella, Mr. Albers. <laughs> you, you called it earlier. Let's see if they go back to Albers down the middle of the seam. Steffi's in the gun. Looked like somebody jumped Four early, but they're good. Yeah, they're going to roll to the right. Steffi's going to keep it at the 35 to the 30. He's going to get to about the 20-yard line, taken down at about the 20. They're going to mark it at the 23-yard line, and that'll be another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. There's that wildcat. I love it. <laughs> you need to get that over your people, alma mater. The, pe the people are yelling, first down. <laughs> love it. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 23-yard line. steffy has got Schmeezing off to his left side. He's got two receivers to the left. And Versailles trying to figure out this Minster offense, which they have not been able to do much tonight. It's been all Brogan, Steffi, and the Wildcats. Clock continues to run. We're under the six-minute mark here in the third quarter. Steffi takes the snap, hands to Smeezing. Smeezing goes to the 20, and he trips up, and he'll go to about the 21-yard line. Just looked like he lost his footing there, Gilly. He had, a, he had a lot of room to move, but he just falls down. Well, I think he's trying to find a hole to go to, and Versailles did a really good job containing the football right there and spreading it out and making him go east and west and orange on the stop along with Landon Kanapke for the Tigers. That'll be second and eight from the 21-yard line. 
Steffi in an empty backfield. He's got trips to the left, a single receiver to the right. That single receiver all the way out to the right side, Tyler Bergman. We saw him make a couple catches tonight. Steffi goes back to Bergman on the right side, and he catches the ball at the 10, spins around, and thrown out of bounds at about the 9-yard line. You saw the single coverage on the right side, Gilly. I called it, and Brogan Steffi saw exactly Pitch what you and, and I did. Yeah. Pitch and catch. Drake Arns on the stop. Drake Arns is everywhere. He's a nice football player. He is. So that'll bring up another Lee's Famous Recipe first down. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Busher Electric. So Steffi's in the gun, first and 10 from the 11. He's got Schmeezing off to the left side. He's got a single receiver far to the left side. That's Dylan Heitkamp. Don't be surprised if he doesn't make that slant move again or they go deep to the left side. We'll see what they do on this play. Steffi takes the ball, hands it to Schmeezing, goes up the middle and goes to about the five yard line. Connor Schmeezing, the workhorse tonight as he gets it to the five yard line and the clock continues to run at 425 and counting. Good job by the lineman up front. Hess, Fremmel, Pringer, Hine, Homan, great job there. Opening up holes for his running back to get through. It was second and six from the six-yard line. Brogan Steffi, he's got Connor Schmeezing off to his left side. Single receiver on the right side. Steffi keeps the ball and gives Schmeezing. Schmeezing off the left side, and he's fighting for yards, and he's going to take a, maybe a yard loss there, Gilly. It was third, well, it's third and six from the six. Maybe, maybe a yard, maybe back to the line of scrimmage, but a nice job by the Versailles defensive line. Sure was. Yeah, Nerneman right there. Nice play there by that young man for for sales. You go third and six from the seven, and I, I was right. It was a loss for one. Steffi takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Looks across, throws to the right, throws to the middle, and the he's got fella. his man, the big man. Another Burke Petroleum touchdown as he finds the big man. Cole Albers, you called it, Gilly. You said it again. Well, he's such a mismatch problem, you know. He moves well. He's got nice hands. I remember him coming out here as a freshman and getting to see a lot of minutes then. You could just tell now he's growing up and maturing. His body's filling out, and he spent the time in the weight room. Makes it 34 to nothing with 2.45 to go here in the third quarter. Steffi, the freshman, on for the extra point, and it is good. He is 5 of 5 tonight. So with 2.39 to go in the third quarter, the Minster Wildcats lead 35 to nothing. We come back, we'll have a running clock. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Welcome back to Minster High School, where with 2.39 to go in the third quarter, the Minster Wildcats are taking a 35 to nothing lead over the Sales Tigers. And that means a running clock here as we proceed on. And it's been Minster, Minster, Minster all night. And Brogan Steffi has led this team with precision, accuracy, and an unbelievable job. And there's the kick down to about the 22-yard line. It'll be picked up, brought across the 30, to the 35, to the 40. And a nice job of bringing that ball out. And Great Versailles, arms. yeah, Arns with the, gets the Tigers in good field position. You know, Gilly, we've, we've watched over the years so many good Versailles teams. They were fantastic last year. It's just odd to see them getting beat like this. And, I, you know, is it Minster is, you know, we're looking at two different things here, but Minster's really, really good. Minster was a team two, three years ago, if you remember right. These seniors yes. had to be put into positions to play as youngsters, and it's paying off now. Oh, absolutely. it's paying. Their depth and their uh, size and their athleticism is second to none. So we'll go first and 10 from the 40. Wilker throws off to the right side. He's got a man out there. He's got Francis out there. And he uh, picks up about three yards on the screen play to the right side. But a great job. You want to talk about gang tackling and getting to the ball? Well, that's what I'm saying. They yeah. get to the ball quick, don't they? Yes, they do. And, and really, what they do good is they really tackle well in open spaces. And, and to be successful against a passing team, you've got to be able to tackle in open spaces. Well, I'll tell you, that... Bornhorst, he's a load. I mean, he covers a lot of ground from that defensive line position. 
Yes, he does. Four and a half sacks. Will Fremel, four sacks. Luke Kaiser from Versailles, he's, a, he's also got four on the season. They bring up second and eight from the 42. Wilker, a high snap. He's going to roll to the left. This is a designed run, and he has taken down maybe a gain of a yard. Ethan Wilker, that was a designed run. Yeah. Something tells me I think that was the king. <laughs> Love it. The, school, the, the guy doing the announcing even said, the King Will Kanapke. We'll call him Double K, Gilly. King Kanapke. King Kanapke. He is something else. Will Kanapke, the homecoming king tonight, and he's the king on the football field tonight. Got to bring up third and eight from the 42. This should be the last play of the third quarter with the running clock. Wilker is in the gun. He's got a single back off to his right side, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Wilker takes the snap, throws across the middle, and he's got a man out there, and a really nice catch there. Sure was. Number 18, that is Chase Monin with the catch. Yeah, he threaded the needle right there. He threw it in between Cole Richards and couldn't get the other defensive back, but what a nice pitch and catch for Versailles. And that'll end the third quarter. After three quarters of play, the Minster Wildcats lead the Versailles Tigers 35 0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster High School. When the fourth quarter starts, the Wildcats from Minster lead the Versailles Tigers 35 to nothing. And we are ready to start the fourth quarter with a running clock. Quick third quarter. It was an absolutely quick third quarter, and it's going to be quicker unless uh, they can score here. So a deep throw down the right side, left side, and it is picked off. Wow, what a play. Interception in the end zone. What a play. Unbelievable. Get a number on that guy. I Gilly. believe it was number one. Mr. Kaus did a great job running stride for stride with his man, but he did an exceptional job getting that head turned back, locating the football, and also catching it. So another turnover by the Minster Wildcats in Gilly. Up 35 to nothing here. You got to believe they want to run, run that clock down as much as they can. I think we're going to get a lot of Connor schmeezing on this drive. What do you think? Well, or Brogan Steffi, maybe rolling yes. him out a little bit, yeah. Oh, and you're going to, okay. Minster, Minster. Minster is going to a second string offensive line. Okay, so the second string offensive line. Brogan Steffi is still in the game. He's going to throw out to the man on the left side, and he's got a connection. And that catch was made by number three, Andrew Kettner, the 6'1", 135-pound junior. Oh, fumble. A fumble. They're saying a fumble, and it's picked up by Versailles. Gilly, I did not see the fumble at all. And Vic Whiting is on the sidelines. He can't believe it. Yeah, he, he quickly caught the ball and turned up field. Evidently, somebody must have punched it out. Excuse me, Seth Whiting. I said Vic Whiting. Seth Whiting on the sidelines. So it is a turnover. A turnover. Well, Gilly. yeah, and I don't, I don't even know if coach was, coach was upset in disbelief because of the call or the disbelief because of his football uh, player putting the ball on the turf. So here come the Versailles Either Tigers. Way it's a turnover. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So Ethan Wilker with a chance to get the Versailles Tigers on the board here with 9.55 to go in this game. And they're going to go. <laughs> that's just the play they started off the second half with, Gilly, and they get another nice five-yard gain. They saw something, obviously, yeah, there in the middle of that defense. Yeah, something. He's going right behind the, the A and B gap and getting as much as he can. He got about three there. Larger on the stop, along with Dwinger. So that'll bring up second and seven from the 27. For sales, desperate to get on the board here, down 35 nothing. Wilker looks across the field. He tucks it up and was going to throw it, but he's under heavy pressure. He rolls to the left side. He gets out of the box, and he's going to pick up about six yards for a nice gain for the Tigers, so close to a first down. Maybe five yards. Maybe I spoke a little earlier there. Max Kanapke pushed him out at the far boundary over there. Looks like he may have got a yard, yard and a half. I believe Smeezing was also in on the play. 
Bring up third. A little disappointing he called him much defensively here in the second half. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Bring up third and five from the 25. Clock continues to run, 834. Wilker is in the gun. He's got Landon Kanapke off to his right side. Snap is up. He's going to keep it himself. Looks to throw. Throws deep to the end zone. He's got a man out there and a nice defensive play by the Minster defensive back. That's Cole Richard. I think you're right. That is number two, Cole Richard. Boy, they've got athletes everywhere, Gilly. I'm telling oh. you. <laughs> Cole Richard's a heck of a basketball he player. He is a good too. basketball player. Yeah. Steffi's a good basketball player. Albers is a good basketball player. <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Niermeyer's a good basketball player. <laughs> just go, Gilly. You know, we sat down here last year, and they didn't play very well. I forget. It was me and Dave Bowen, and they just did not play very well that night. But I'm thinking, oh. Well, you and I, you and I had them, you and I had them with thinking, Marion Oh, boy. <laughs> These guys are all sophomores and juniors. Yeah. Good luck in the next couple of years. <laughs> Wilker gets the snap. He throws it across the middle and off the hands of his intended target. And he took a licking. But looked like his intended target was number 81, Luke Kaiser. And yeah, that'll I be think a Dylan Heidkamp, like you said, put the old Timex watch, took a licking, but he kept on ticking right there. He got up. <laughs> That'll Big be a, pop, though. Be a turnover on downs. The Minster defense does not break. They bend, but they do not break. It's early, Gilly, but I'm telling you, what, what's your thoughts on next week's showdown with Minster? Oh, I think it's going to be a great game. You I know, obviously, you know, on paper. Sure, Marion Local is the dominant. And the numbers, yeah. I mean, they've got this streak that, is, what, is number one in the country now yeah. for wins? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the one they were playing for tonight? Nobody uh, scoring 40 nobody on them. Nobody 40 over, yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. a state record. <laughs> I mean, you got to believe, you know, Minster's going to be prepared. Absolutely. Now, whether they can, you know, withstand playing down there at Marion Local. New quarterback in the game for Minster, number 18, Carson Kaler, the 5'10", 150-pound freshman. That young man's going to get some playing time tonight here. That'll bring up second and 11 from the 24. Minster going to take their time, let that play clock run down to the very end each possession, or excuse me, each play here. Clock and the beautiful thing is, Danny, when those two teams play next week, it is a great preparation oh, for November yeah. the 1st for the, for the tournament run for the 16-team qualifier. And as you march your way to... Try to get to Canton. Yeah, Dominic Meyer, the ball carrier there, with a nice run. Gain of about three yards. So we're seeing some youngsters here get in some time here for the Minster Wildcats. Clock continues to run at 5 of 35 here in the game. Wildcats lead 35 to nothing. Huge crowd on tap tonight for the home phone or the home fans, Gilly. This this stands are packed. Versailles brought a nice crowd too. It's easy when you have great weather like this in mid-October. Well, and you've got uh, communities to support their kids and the athletes. A nice pass. Taylor right with there. a strike, with an absolute strike to number 85. That is Cole Albers, the 6'8", 230-pound tight end. Look, what, what, a, what a pass by that young man. Carson Kaler, the left-handed. Like Boomer or I was going to say Dylan Gabriel. I was going to say Kenny Stabler. But guess what? That's a little right. rumbling, bumbling, stumbling right. right over here. That's right. Steve Young, whatever left-handed quarterback you want to call. Albers. That's right. First and 10 from the 44. Another Lee's famous recipe first down. Today's premier community sponsor for Minster is the Minster Bank, sponsoring the youth in our community. Big thank you to Lee's Famous Recipe for being our first down sponsor tonight, to Burt Petroleum, our touchdown sponsor, and Busher Electric for our scoreboard sponsor. We're going to keep it right here with 4.30 to go. So lots of high school football. Gilly, it's hard to believe it's the eighth week of the season. We've got two more regular season games. And when you talk about big time games, and we said it before, Marion Local, the next two weeks, will play Minster and Coldwater, the top teams in the MAC. It's just unbelievable, this conference. Yeah, it's unbelievable week in and week out. What you've got to bring to the table or bring inside the track, so to speak, on <laughs> yeah. either field turf or grass and be ready to play. And much respected 
conference throughout the state of Ohio. Absolutely. So we'll go first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Four minutes and 30 seconds. The only time the clock does stop on a running clock is a timeout or an injury. So the clock did stop there. Boy, this breeze feels good. It sure does. Beautiful night tonight. So they're trying to get their personnel in the game here. Kaler's in the gun. He's got one back to his left, two receivers to the right. He's going to hand the ball off to Meyer. Meyer picks up about five yards, goes to the middle of that line. Nice cut back there by that young man. And that keeps the clock running. 4-12 to go in the fourth quarter. Michael Menke on the stop. Number 77, Logan Murphy. Number 69, Jacob Davis. So nice job by Minster at getting these kids in here. It really is. And, and, and the PA announcers introducing each and every one of them. So uh, it's the respect of both coaches have for one another. Absolutely. You know? Two really good coaches in Seth Whiting and Ryan Jones. So they have uh, been through the battles before here. So second and six from the 40. Kaler's in the gun. Takes a snap. Hands the ball off. He'll go off the right side and pick up about four yards. And the carry made by number 34, Chase Bishop, the 5'8", 175-pound sophomore. Eli Kaiser got him around the ankles and brought him down. So Gilly Minster will go to seven and one, five and one in the MAC. For sales, falls to five and two, and or excuse me, five and three, and three and three overall. The significant part of the Minster, or the for sales team, is this will be loss number three in a row, heading to or to heading to, uh, you know, the last two games of the year. You got to get some momentum before. You got to get some momentum before yeah. the tournament. You know, the schedule, you know, appears to lighten up a little bit for sure. them. But, uh, you know, if you, if you really want to check the computer points, Joe Idle, that's J-O-E-E-I-T-E-L. Joe Itell, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Itell, you know, he, he updates everything and uh, computer points and secondary points by each region and each uh, division. And uh, here line everything out as far as what predictions are and who may play who and who has definitely solidified themselves into the playoffs. And it's just a neat thing. And and it, it's great for the communities to be able to get on there and look. And, cause, you know, 16 teams gets in now. Absolutely. So fourth and one from the 35. And uh, no rubbing it in here, Gilly. This is a, the right place to go here across midfield. Sure. And they're not going to pick it up. And they're going to fall short. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. By Good Versailles. Job there by Versailles. Yeah, so Versailles stops Minster on fourth and one. Schmidtmeyer for Versailles on the stop. Turnover on downs. Clock continues to run with 1.42 to go here in the fourth quarter. Minster up 35 nothing. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert bringing you the homecoming contest 2024 here at Minster High School. And it looked like Minster called a timeout. How about that? Minster has called a timeout. The PA announcer just said Minster is doing really well at the state tournament. Join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as we break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. It's the Three Wise Men podcast on WOSN. Boy, we get some great guests on there, Gilly, and uh, have a great time with that. Yeah, you, you had your buddy on there and was razzing him a little bit, Mr. Epperly. Yeah, I had Jim Epperly on a couple weeks ago, one of the great official here in Northwest. He did a great job. He did a great job that night. Being an official is a thankless job. Ain't that the truth. I don't care what sport it is. So Wilker brings him out first and 10 from the 37 and throws a dart to his receiver, and he goes across the middle for another Lee's famous recipe Gets first Arns. down. And that was Arns. My goodness, Wilker got that ball out in a hurry, Gilly. And let's see what they're calling yes. out. we got an injury yeah, on the ground Hopefully here. it's a cramp. Looks like a uh, cramp. Yeah, maybe a cramp. He's holding his leg up. Let's see. He's uh, writhing in pain, so the medical staff will come out. Got a young man down. We're going to step aside here with 1.10 to go. We'll be right back after these messages.
back here at Minster High School. The injured player was number 16, Drake Orange, the 6'2", 165-pound junior. And Gilly he got up and walked off on his own, which is a great sign yes. to see. Yeah, because he's logged a lot of plays tonight on both sides he of the sure ball. He sure has. He sure has. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 37. Wilker looks across the middle. He's under heavy pressure, and he's sacked. And the ball gets knocked loose, and it is recovered by Minster. Or, excuse me, covered by Versailles. Number 77 with the big sack, and that is Logan Murphy, the 5'11", 175-pound senior. He's that swim move and yes, got sir. around his man. And Boy, the home crowd was excited about put that. Put a licking on the quarterback right there. Bring up second and 10 for the 47. Clock down to 30 seconds left in this one. Wilker takes the ball. He's going to go up the middle. Goes across the 50 to the 45. He goes to the left side, and he'll be taken out of bounds. No, he won't. He's trying to make up for the lost yardage, and he keeps going. The clock continues to run, and that may be the last play of the game as the clock goes to 10 seconds, and Versailles trying to get a play in. I don't know if they're going to get it in, Gilly, with five seconds, four, three, and they are not going to get it in, and that'll do it. The Minster Wildcats defeat the Versailles Tigers 35 to nothing. Gilly, your final thoughts on this one? Well, I'll tell you what, it was it was one of them games that started out early, you know, with Minster taking the football right down the field and scoring. Not only did they do it once, they did it twice, and Versailles turned it over on downs a couple possessions, and Minster got it done with the defensive end throughout the four quarters, and Versailles could never get into the groove of things, and that's a tribute to to Minster and the line of scrimmage controlling it on both sides of the ball. You know, Versailles has you know, got a couple weeks left to, to regroup themselves and maintain a possible position into the playoffs, and Minster's definitely going to secure themselves a spot. Like I said, Joe Idle started to update things, and you got to believe that they've locked a position with two weeks to go. And obviously the big one's next week down at Maria Stein. If they could go down there and pull one off, they can put themselves in a position for a MAC to tie for a MAC championship with basically one week to go. Absolutely, and that'll do it from Minster High School. Next week, Gilly, you and I are at Wapakoneta for Wapakoneta Bath, a big WBL showdown. For Jacob O'Neill, our cameraman, for Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook saying thanks for watching football on WOSN.